Does anybody have questions? And uh, my answer may be a little flimsy, but it'll be the best I could. Brother Sean. Uh, yes. Could you please elaborate on 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 31? Okay. Uh, Let's turn over there, everybody. Mm -hmm. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 31. Just, just your input on what exactly was going on there. Okay, then. So the question is, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 30, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 12, verse 31, our brother here is interested on my perspective, uh, my take on this passage. Okay, so 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 31, what is uh, the meaning over here or the interpretation? Okay, what's it talking about? And he went forth the people that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows of iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brick, uh, brick kiln. And thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. <coughs> so David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. As usual, uh, the method to find an interpretation to the verse is you look at the context, right? So then when you look at verse 26, you'll notice that the context is David's battle. So context first. The context is David's battle and warfare with the children of Ammon. Throughout your Bible, you'll notice that what God wanted was full uh, genocide, elimination of the Ammonites. Because the Ammonites, they corrupted themselves before God and they sinned greatly before him. So uh, they were supposed to completely wipe them out. And if they were going to take them as slaves, according to biblical terms, what they were going to do is that you'll see the example at verse 30. <coughs> they take the spoils of the city. So that's known as well. When you read throughout the Bible, when they conquer their enemies, it's going to be annihilation. And then if they take prisoners which we're going to look later on the verses, and they're also going to take spoils. So this is a natural occurrence of what David's doing. He's doing the same method as Joshua and all the other children of Israel, what they do with their enemies. Now in this one, though, it's kind of unique because there's only two places in your Bible that I know of that would mention this kind of method. Verse 31, And he brought them forth, the people that were therein, and put them, look at this, put them what? Under saws and under harrows of iron. So notice that we can guess this next part, under harrows of iron. So these people, they were locked up in irons, all right? They were enslaved. But they're put under saws right over here. Okay, so look at Hebrews chapter 11. This happened to one person. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Now, the Bible doesn't record it, but... The Bible doesn't record a lot of different saints, how they died. So like Paul, for example, we know that he died in the Bible, according to the book of 2 Timothy 4, but it doesn't mention how he died. So how he died, when we look at historical tradition. So he died by beheading. That's what we do know. He died by beheading. And then what we do know concerning about uh, Isaiah was that he was sawed to death, actually, in half. So look at Hebrews chapter 11. Look at uh, verse 36. Uh, well, let's look at verse 32 by context. Notice the last part of verse 32 says, and Samuel and of the what? Prophets. So the context here is going to be following, include, it's going to include the prophets. I'm sure there are other people, but notice that it puts particular attention to the prophets here, right? So Isaiah is one of those prophets that are not mentioned at Hebrews 11, 32, which can include, okay? Now look at this. Verse 37, these prophets were stoned. That's true, right? They were stoned. They were what? Sawn asunder. So notice right here a particular term about being sawn asunder. Under saws, right? So being sawed, to death, that's quite a cruel way to think about it, right? So this happened to Isaiah. 
if this happened to Isaiah, then think about it. Not only that, if you look at uh, other ancient accounts, you'll see that ancient accounts will record of how people died under saws as well. So that's very possible. And then you can see how King David did that as well then. See? So then what he did is that he executed them by sawing them. Now, before uh, you'll notice also over here <coughs> that in verse 31, under axes of iron, so it's, uh, they could have been beheaded over here and made them pass through the brick kiln, and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. He also put them to uh, work as well or under all sorts of execution and death. So what is kind of interesting at 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 31 is this is probably uh, the only area in your Bible where I'll mention all the execution devices, so to speak, of the children of Israel. So this can be a justification of the Roman Catholic Inquisition, so to speak. You see that? But that's the problem of the Roman Catholic Church. They're not dispensationalists. That's why dispensationalism is so important. So, because why? You can find a lot of problems with the Old Testament. If you look at the Old Testament, it is not the same as the New Testament. How do you know that? Because the Word gave it away. Old and new. Duh. Okay. Amen. So they're different. Now, Old Testament is strict. It's under what? Law. But in the New Testament, it's under what? Grace. Now, the Catholic Church, when they keep claiming grace, grace, grace to you, they're full of hypocrites when they do that inquisition, especially when they sprinkle the Iron Maiden. You got to realize they sprinkled holy water over it. That's right. They thought that burning, uh, they thought that <coughs> by killing people or executing people, burning people at the stake, that that was grace and mercy, that they were saving their souls. Uh, Islam was infamous for that too. Muhammad tried to go by an Old Testament pattern where he tried to do a theocracy. So a theocracy setup is where basically where God is king and then the people follow under God's governorship and rulership. But for the Catholic Church and Islam to claim theocracy is full hypocrisy because uh, God's not the final authority of their system. It's their popes, it's their religious leaders who calls the shots. Calvin also tried to do a theocracy. You Calvinists probably don't like that. That's why we deny Calvinism. Amen. Calvin did a theocracy setup that actually even uh, his system, where they persecuted and even killed our predecessors of Baptists. Didn't you know that? Yep. Yeah, these Calvinists are murderers. I'm sure some Calvinists today didn't like hearing that. Yeah, your forefathers were murderers. Amen. They even burned people at the stake. They even burned a few people at the stake, the Calvinists. Why? Because they tried to set up a, their theocracy, God's kingdom. If you didn't get the right kind of haircut, you went, to, you, went to, you went to prison automatically. You went to jail. Didn't you know that? Man, imagine pastor had that, you know. Somebody walks in with the wrong haircut, the improper haircut that's not biblical, you know. It's not just, oh, you're worldly. It's, no, you're going to go to prison. You're going to go to jail, you know. That's a theocratic setup, but we don't do that today. The church is not taking the affairs of the state. That's why there was separation of church and state. So it's because that way the church doesn't have power over the state and take care of state matters. The church is under grace. That's what we understand. So when they criticize David, the easy argument is, one, it's dispensationalism. We don't do that. That's one. Secondly, you want to argue that during that time, it was normal. It was normal during those cultures that time that that's how they executed people. Today, we would think that is in you, inhumane, but you got to realize during the Old Testament time, that's what it was. It was normal. If you put American society, our democratic society, back in those days, you know what people would think you? They would think you're weird. See that? I thought we're all about cultural sensitivity, right? Respecting people's different cultures, how they did things. I thought we're all about that. Then why don't you think about the culture of that time? And why do you only pick on the Bible? Didn't you know there were pagan nations who did worse than Israel? They did a lot worse than Israel how they executed people. So that's why Israel did what was fair to the Ammonites and the other nations. Why? Because they did the same with their people. So you got to understand that. Okay, so that, that'll be the answer to that one. Okay, uh, Max had that question, so sorry. Oh, my bad. Um, in Genesis 4, Okay. 
Uh, can you mention that passage again? That's actually interesting. I might make a connection there. Yeah, but so, so what's that passage? So uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. All right. Y'all turn over there, all right? I might do a connection there. Yeah, all right. it mentions that there's two, if a man has two wives, mm -hmm. and one wife he favors and a wife he doesn't, uh -huh. so if that unfavored wife someone's born first, uh -huh. then that son has, actually has the first right of the first. Mm -hmm. So, so e I think mm -hmm. is that why is... The, why is Cain not the, the, uh, the, the <coughs> shepherd of sheep as opposed to Abel being that? Because the sheep to me seems more of a higher position than uh, Abel. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay, then. Uh, so then let's look at Genesis chapter 4. So actually the, uh, the answer might be more simple than you think, actually. Hmm. Yeah. So... But I might make a connection here with Deuteronomy, actually. So that might bring it. So your point might bring a. Your question might bring an interesting point that I might pull up. So let me look at Deuteronomy 21 first, though, and then I'll give a simple answer for Genesis 4. So Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 15 through 17: If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated. Then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So I like that phrase, actually. That's going to, I can make a sermon out of that, actually. <laughs> So I remember that phrase quite often in the Bible. The right of the firstborn is his. All right, short sermonette. So the Lord Jesus Christ at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he is known as the first fruits, and that's why uh, he's, uh, because he is the first fruits, first begotten, that's the reason why the rest of us can become begotten. And so the right of the firstborn, the Lord Jesus Christ, is his, and he makes all the rules on what he wants to do. So Deuteronomy chapter 21 gives a great picture about the Lord Jesus Christ and his Christian seed after that. And the right, and all of us, we have to go by the land grant that Jesus gets. That land grant is not ours, that's Jesus Christ. And we've got to follow his terms and his rules. Uh, another interesting thing is the reason why the Lord mentioned that is because you'll notice the history here at Genesis chapter 4, the firstborn is Cain, right, at verse 1? Yes. Did the firstborn belong to God or to the devil? Uh. Mm. So notice right here, Satan got the firstborn over here. So that's an interesting nugget over here. The very firstborn in all of your Bible did not belong to God. 1 John chapter 2 says he was of that wicked one. Mm. See? So notice that the firstborn did not... Go to God, it belonged to Satan. So God did not like that. So what did God do? God made a rule at the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy. He mentioned about the, in, so that when he talked about the firstborn, where he mentioned about the importance of the firstborn, getting it, was actually not in Genesis. It was actually in Exodus concerning about the Passover lamb. Why? Innocent blood. The lamb. That's when he prized the firstborn. But you know what's very interesting? The firstborn, which is Cain, right? This happened not at Exodus. This happened at the book of Genesis. So when you read throughout the book, the entire book of Genesis, the firstborn was not prized. It always, it always connected to the devil in some way or the bad person. Ishmael, not... Uh, so it was... Isaac, not Ishmael. 
It was uh, Jacob, not Esau. Jacob was the one that was chosen by God, not Esau. And Romans 9 was so strong about that, that I chose uh, Jacob to inherit the blessings of the nation and the seed. And then you'll notice also that even with uh, Jacob's children and seed, he didn't pick Reuben. He, uh, it wasn't Reuben. It wasn't the next brothers, Levi, Simeon, etc. It was Judah that Christ's seed came from. You'll notice that Jacob, that's the reason why things changed, which was kind of interesting. What changed was after Jacob. Jacob had a hated wife and a wife that he loved, yeah. Rachel and Leah. Leah was a hated wife. But the Lord, he, uh, he decided to favor Leah, bless her with more seed. But then when Rachel finally got right with God by praying, you know, that's why the Lord blessed her with children as well. But Jacob was picking favorites. Because he picked favorites, he was like, you know, I like Joseph better. And then that's why <laughs> the remaining brothers, they hated uh, Joseph, you know, sold him to slavery. That's got to be bad. That's a lot of psychological counseling you want to do with that family. <laughs> a lot of family therapy, you know. Yeah. Why did you sell your brother to slavery? How could you? My dad. And then you counsel that dad, you know, what do you think about your boys, you know? Oh, yeah, I did. I, when, when they made a A- in school, you know, I, I scowled at them. And when my boy, Joseph, got a B plus, I was so proud of him, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, so that's what probably happened at family therapy that time, you know. So, <laughs> so, so because of uh, Jacob that time where, uh, uh, where Joseph was prized, that's when the Lord started to make rules over there that the right of the firstborn is his. And he also mentioned about the firstborn of innocent blood, the lamb. That's when he started to prize that, you'll notice, which is pretty, pretty interesting in your Bible. So I find it interesting that Genesis, it was all negative, but then it started at Exodus, the second book in your Bible and onward, that the firstborn was prized. That's what the Lord prioritized after that. Um, let's see over here. Um, so now, the simple answer, right? The simple, all right, so I've given you the golden nuggets. Now I'm going to give you the simple answer here, all right? The simple answer over here is that I don't think that it was where Cain got the nasty job and then Abel got the nicer job. I think it's that both uh, brothers, they had their preferences of occupation. Yeah, so it's just a preference. Mm -hmm. Preference of word. Uh huh. Yeah, he was definitely prideful. Let's look at Genesis uh, four. Uh, was your question going to continue? Or? Okay, then. All right. So let's look at Genesis four. If I'm interrupting, let let me know. All right, guys. All right. Let's look at Genesis chapter four. Notice over here, in verse five, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Okay, and Cain was what. Very wroth, and his what? Countenance. Countenance fell. See, so that shows that his pride was hurt. So there was no doubt there was pride involved. Um, did he do something wrong? Maybe the Lord was mean to Cain. No, because look at verse 6 and 7. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Mm -hmm. See that? So that means he wasn't doing well. See, he wasn't really doing his best. You might say, and if thou doest not well, what? Sin lieth at the door. There was something sinful in his heart, see? So there was no doubt Cain, yeah, he was prideful. You might say, why is that? Well, it's kind of what we learned in our history, right? He was giving his own work, the fruit of the ground. He was not get, letting innocent blood substitute in his place like Abel, a lamb. Cain should have known better. You might say, no, no, he honestly didn't know. No, he didn't know. Because Adam and Eve, what, the, what, were, the, what were they covered in? They were covered by innocent blood, lambskin. Something had to take over their place. See? You don't think that Cain and Abel didn't know that story? They knew that story a thousand times when they were growing up. So they were raised under Adam and Eve too, so they should know better. But Cain, no, he wanted to give what he wanted. And let's say that Cain, you know, the Lord didn't respect his offering. Okay, you know what Cain could have done? Very simple. Yeah. All right? He could have just simply, God could have, he could have simply grabbed one of Abel's lambs. Yeah. That shows how much pride he had. Yeah. 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 You know, God, imagine, you know, 
As some of you may have listened to the ad lib commentary, you know, and I'm going to ad lib Dr. Upman's ad lib because it's not an accurate Amen. detail of it. But basically, the Lord says to Cain, you know, you know, uh, well, hey, you know, uh, Cain's like, what do I offer? You know, I, I, there's no, uh, where can I, uh, what can I offer? And God's like, well, why don't you offer me a lamb? And then Cain's like, well, where, where am I going to find a lamb? There ain't no lambs anywhere. And God's like, are you blind as a bat? Look at your brother over there. You see your brother Abel? And Cain's like, well, that blankety blank blank, I wouldn't get him blankety blank blank for surely blankety blank. And then God's like, why don't you go over there, you know, and then get a sheep from him. And then Cain responded, and ask him. And God's like, yeah, ask him. Take it as a gift. Take it as a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Cain was a tiller of the ground, the Bible not says, right? Works. Yeah, not by works. Not of yourselves. It is the what? Yeah, yeah. Gift of God. Take it as a gift. No! I'm going to kill you if you make fun of my religion, if you say I'm wrong again. Your hate speech. I told you, history repeats. There's no difference. Cain's religion is what? The religion of this world today. 